Ah, oh, fuck you. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? Just want to give you an update on the Vegas Tunnels video. So this is the first time that something like this has happened, but unfortunately, our video has been taken down by YouTube. Not because of explicit content or profanity or nudity or anything crazy like that, but because of a copyright strike. Um, an organization out of Las Vegas, a local news station called Fox 5, submitted a copyright strike and a takedown Yo. using their lawyers. I guess they have an issue with me using 10 seconds of their publicly broadcast news clip in my hour and 45 minute documentary. I used like a little segment of a broadcast they did as B-roll when I was explaining the work that is done by... There's a beautiful painting. That's incredible. I need to get something like that. Sorry for the chewing, I'm almost done. Just eating a bell pepper. Up, up, come on. Thank you. Um, <sighs> Joa, I got Vans Authentics and they're the worst shoes I've ever skated. I'm so upset, super massive waste of money. You bought the $50 van shoes? <clears throat> and you're pissed off? You know why they're called you know why they're called authentics? Is because they came out five thousand years ago and they didn't they've not changed anything about the shoe. That's why they're called authentics. Dude, if you should be what is this? Uh if you, unless you're riding a Alva Cruiser see here yeah you got to be riding one of these things right here if you're gonna be skating an authentic this is basically oh it doesn't even come with trucks you're basically cosplaying as an old guy with these on you should be doing like uh riding loose trucks that are two inches wide doing hang tens but otherwise you know you bought a cheap shoe <clears throat> They don't have, they make skate versions and that's probably what he's talking about. So, um, I'm pulling his leg a little bit here, but yeah, I mean, these look a little better, but not by much. This kid, uh, there's this kid named Eric who went to the same indoor as I did. And he was one of the cool kids and he wore Vans Authentics. All he did was, like, he had long, blonde hair, and all he did was skate around and do, like, cool bone dollies and shit, but he never really tried. That's a Vans Authentic style, dude. They have a dope-ass flick. Usually, in my experience, shoes that will not last long are incredible for, you know, for two to three sessions, you know? Or as long as you can kind of milk them for. I've skated a lot of canvas shoes. Like I skate the last resort canvas shoes. And the just the flick on them. You get so much flick and board feel. Like if that's the kind of skating that you're doing. Then you'll get a lot of uh, use out of a really shitty shoe. Like uh, also actual Converse uh, Chuck Taylors. Like the original ones. are The flick on those is absurd. But you're just going to hurt your foot. If you uh, skate those for longer than a couple weeks. All right. Oh. What's happening today? What? What's on YouTube? Mark Suchu in Stuttgart. What's up, everybody? Um, oh, it's gone. This guy got canceled. Remember that? And he's back. I almost met him once. But I didn't. Yeah, he like knocked yeah, on the he window. Knocked on the dog. He came closer <laughs> and I'm like, bro, why are you doing this? Like, bro, because he's here. And I like, bro, chill. I appreciated it. I was like, I was getting on the train and I saw a group of skaters and I had just been sick. I was like, oh, I'll let them be. So I went to the next train car and I was just chilling there at the next stop. Yo, run. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't care about the big head because everybody's looking for you since summer. This is scripted. Nobody actually likes Mark Suchu in real life. This is fake.
I got a pair of Vans for free, and they've been in my closet for eight years. Nice. Oh, look who it is. Look what the cat dragged in. It's our friend Neo. <laughs> Is uh, your manic episode concluded now? Sweet Prince? Let's see. What did you link me? All right. Let's see what our top mod admin uh, <laughs> psych ward inmate has to offer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Dang. Is it just me or is this a little LNS pilled? Is late night stars that hot that their influence is already spreading or am I just an idiot? <clears throat> what happened to Poser Zero? Ran out of shit to talk about. I'll review the Willy Wonka movie on that channel next week. Oh, yeah, this is totally a uh, haunted website core. Oh, my God. It's Trung Nguyen and Zach Anders. They had a baby. And it's this guy. The boot cut bandit. Who? Uh, press one if you're wearing boot cuts in the chat, please. I need to get a... Uh, I need to get a feel on the situation. <clears throat> I need to feel you guys up. See who's wearing boot cuts. Okay. Yeah. Is that the next pants revolution? They're saying we're in a skateboarding fashion crisis. That's what people are saying. And maybe the solution is some nice boot cut jeans. Did I watch a Happy Medium Colors yet? Uh, no, no. Maybe if I get drunk this week, I'll watch it. But I'm not watching that shit sober. <clears throat> okay, it seems like we have a lot of boot cut uh, wearers. There's a lot of ones. Ooh, the kids are still using pigeons. Nice. This kid's inspiring me right now. I need to start taking more fashion risks. I need a nice bandana. Fuck. This is the latest fashion risk I took here. Check this out, guys. I spent $30 on this. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. I need to evolve out of the graphic t-shirt genre into the uh, thermal with black t-shirt um, handkerchief look. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yup. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, yeah. I like the musical direction. That was wetty. My only critique of this perfect person so far is I don't know what you call this uh, style of like text where it's like a bunch of cursive like it's very Y2K ish like Ed Hardy kind of font I fucking hate that shit um, that's my only critique other than that everything about this is perfect yes king the haloing He just like me. Bald as fuck. 
That was a nice trick, though. Is, is he just like me, or am I just like him? Interesting. Yes. Some good spots in here. What is happening with his necklace? He's making like, he has like a noose necklace. Hmm. You know, some of these tricks. Can't really decide if this should be allowed or not. Being a hipster is such a complicated, contrived and subjective matter. Like, if you just have a dipped skateboard, or okay, is it acceptable for you to just do manual varial flips out? Do you know what I mean? Because it's not a hard trick. But skateboarding is all about what you can get away with. And I think most people wouldn't notice that this is just a free-ass manual trick in here. Not that there's uh, not other free tricks in here. Time to go beast mode. Kinda. Oh. Yes. How many views does this have? 346 views? Alright guys, smash a like on this, please. This deserves more than 340 views. It's too hard to make it in skateboarding these days. <sighs> Gap 50 was gay, not gonna lie. Um, I think this video, my estimation, my summary of this is uh, we have, it's kind of tough. This is like a classic skateboarding debate, you know? Should fashion matter? Of course fashion should matter. But then you have guys... It's almost like in skateboarding, the more time you invest into fashioning a perfect outfit, the lower your skill, you know? And that's not a perfect uh, ratio or correlation, but... This is a definitely feeling like a more fashion weighted production to me <clears throat> i've got tickets to sls yeah guys street league is next weekend all right neo just posted the link everybody go leave a like Ooh, i put out the most embarrassing skate part of all time like five years ago you can watch it if you want to watch something embarrassing hell yeah you could botch let's see it Th put the link in here where can we send videos Oh, yeah, you can't link on YouTube, huh? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to tell you to email me or something because then I'll get a bunch of emails of shit. Um, I, I'm reading YouTube chat also. I have the double the double chat up. <clears throat> yeah, if you want to, I guess that's good. I guess if you want to send a, a link, just go onto Twitch. But then a lot of you are going to complain because you have to make an account to chat. So let's watch this deeds part. Ow, my ears. I watched it this week, but I'm going to watch it again. Deeds 65K? Damn. Poor one out for deeds. He fell off hard. <laughs> They should have shown us the whole session here. They 
should definitely share the pin on this too. Imagine what an actual transition skater could do to something like this. Instead, we have flaccid deeds, wobbly deeds, doing a tray flip halfway up. Shaking my head. these pants my god all right am i crazy or do these dunks just not have anything to do with what's going on here these dunks look like they were made in another universe like they look like they're from a different cartoon Oops. Muted it. Ooh, that switch back over crook was kind of sick. Ooh. I hate to give Deeds credit. I hate to give him credit. That was pretty beast. No solid two. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, man. What the fuck are you doing, dude? <laughs> he just tried to make that flat ground kickflip look as cool as possible and then carved and made like four S's. <laughs> That was beast, though. God damn. Deeds is such a... He's making me bipolar. I'll hate him for the first half of the clip, and then for the second half, he, he I'll, I'll respect him. That was a nice clip. <laughs> Into traffic. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. I wonder when the last video part came out. When was the last video part that didn't have a single ride on or ollie list trick? I feel like it's been so long. I mean, the last part we watched had like 80 right on tricks. But honestly, it kind of makes sense. Why would you want to ollie when it's currently an acceptable standard in skateboarding to never ollie? Who the fuck would choose to put in more effort? You'd have to be a psycho. So I kind of get it. Oh my god, that was sick. He did the trick backwards, but other than that... <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, there it fucking is. Somebody in chat said Deeds does some creative stuff. Uh, he kind of does some creative stuff, but he also does... Uh, I feel like he's he's not a genuine creative force in skateboarding. But he's like a... Very much a contemporary practitioner of what is trendy at the moment. Like, he'll do a good job of doing so, a bunch of fucking... Uh, on the nose 2k24 stuff doggy
right on alert indeed. And he is, he kind of toned it back, but he is a definitely a fake Emmanuel abuser. And also, sorry, I'm just repeating some things I said for anybody who watched the stream a couple days ago, because I already watched this, but... Um, his he does i feel like he stopped wearing what were those pants there's like a one brand of barber switched the turbo what the hell i broke four generations of family tradition with five little my ad block stopped working yeah he stopped wearing the butterfly t-shirt And uh, what's the other thing? I guess they were shorts too, huh? I don't remember, but some of you guys will know what pants I'm talking about. <laughs> I think he was sponsored. Maybe he quit. This was like a full shorts part. Find him, but there was a specific kind. That's pretty buck for deeds. Some Jack O'Grady type shit. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, this is a thing John Shanahan, Trey Manuald, which was a uh, really sick, significantly sicker trick. This is good for a truck part. Right on grind, black wheels. Oh, my God. Look at his tech deck board. Oh my god. Right on Grind Demon. Oh, maybe that's... Is that the brand? Is that what he wears? Cash only? Pants. Mm, I don't think so, but these are fucked. Maybe these are the pants he wears. Hot oh, damn. Oh yeah, what is that guy on the back there? <laughs> cool. Ooh, is that who owns this? Aleka Lang? This font they use is... Uh, the common. Anyway. <clears throat> Holy shit, Deeds on Rosfa. Is he on? Is that confirmed? I know he's been skating the uh he's been skating the boards. What the fuck is wrong with a ride on grind? It's not that there's necessarily anything wrong with it. It's just what everybody's doing right now. We all decided we didn't want to Ollie anymore and um, cash only. So, what are you doing? Yeah, uh, yeah. Cash only is like a, it's like premium uh, Ross goods. Like it's kind of like Echo Unlimited swag, but like extremely expensive. So I don't know. That like kind of budget streetwear look is. <laughs> people are trying to make that happen right now, but then charging like absurd prices for it. It's like, dude, just. Go buy a, a shitty Echo jacket from Ross. Buy four of them. Damn, this is, I guess it's Australian dollars, so it's not as bad, but. Oh my God. Hey, stop. Oh, shit. 
I think there might be a guy here installing the screens. I'll, give me one second. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, we're dealing with uh, K911 here. There's a guy installing screens on the windows, so um, yeah, she does not like that. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, um, what else there was, uh, came out this week on Thrasher? Oh, we should watch the Braille shit. Braille's dead. Braille's over. Look at this fucking thumbnail. What that? What a hack. Look at this fit too. He doesn't have anything in his closet anymore besides his Scientologist uniform. This guy quit. This dude who's, by the way, twenty five. All right, take two. I've already failed at this one time. Let's try to do it again. Ultimate goal, hold it together. All right, this is, uh, can I get two words out? That'd be nice if I can get two words out of my mouth. Give this fucking guy an Oscar, man. Holy hell. Did he put on an eyeshadow to do this? All right, let's go. The hardest video I'll ever film in my life. Try again. Hey everyone, my name is Gabe Cruz. I'm the acting YouTube manager for Braille Skateboarding, which basically means that for the past- So yeah, this guy quit. <sighs> he looks old as shit. I, I don't even know, he like, he doesn't even look like old. He just looks odd. He looks like a celebrity that, he looks like, like a cel he looks like an old celebrity. That's what it is. He looks like a dude that has had work done. You know, like he looks like he's young. He he appears young, but artificially young. Seven years since mid 2017, I've been doing all the behind the scenes stuff for the main Braille YouTube channel, coming up with video ideas, filming them. Look at this editing that they do, where they do a slow zoom and then they cut and reset the zoom so you don't get bored. Stuff for the main Braille YouTube channel, coming up with video ideas, filming them, getting them assigned to editors, making thumbnails, uploading the videos. That should be illegal. There should be rules against playing with people's psyches in that, in that manner. Uh, SEO research, whatever you want to, anything you can possibly think of behind the scenes i've probably had something to do with it for the last seven and a half years of my life and it's like my a history with braille goes edging technique that. but today um oh my god i don't know how to say it dude but, fuck um, you just say today it today is my last day with braille skateboarding <laughs> so before i get into any of the hard stuff the fuck was that Why why did it why do they need this theatrical horse shit to these videos, man? Like why does leaving Braille have to be such a fucking tragedy? You just stare into the camera and breathe. All this whole fucking preamble too of like, okay, I'm gonna get up and get a chode bo water bottle because this is too fucking emotional right now. Dude, fuck off. Everybody wants out of Braille right now. Everybody's 
dipping. I don't know who any of these people are, but. So before I get into any of the hard stuff, I think what's really important about this journey is going back to the very beginning and. Anyway, let's watch this All one. Right. This one's even better. Another guy is sitting. Why are we in black and white? Well, what are we going to say? You're lopsided looking. That's when you become evil. The more evil you are, your face starts to look lopsided. There's a clap. We're going to run this. 5,500 videos, 1.8 okay. billion views. Wow, YouTube, it. And why, why does he have a, uh, is there a Braille t-shirt ranking system? Because he has a, his Braille t-shirt has a little uh, flourish down there. My last or move. Gabe Cruz here, he just has a regular one. Is there a, is there like a hierarchy to Braille members and the t-shirts that they get? This is just more overflow from the Scientology universe right here. He's a grand master Brailleman. Videos, 1.8 billion views. Wow, YouTube, it has been a... Ew, look at his mouth. ...a ride. So... <laughs> it has been a... He has the same mouth as the, uh, the intro to the free lunch videos back in the day. Hey, don't move. IRS e file. Oh my is god, open. how is this happening to me? Snap your W2 and file. Jerry, when's the first time you picked up a skateboard? <sighs> probably about eight. What did you think when you first skated? I thought I'm gonna be a fucking millionaire. Wow. That intro is so fucked up now in retrospect, but he's got the same mouth as the free lunch guy. And I don't feel bad for uh, giving Aaron Cairo shit at all. A That's the ride. first thing that popped in so, my head. I don't even know what to say. I don't know how to um, respond to this or how to answer everybody's questions. I'm sure you have a million, but yes, changes are afoot. And there are a lot of changes that will be happening. And I wanted to give you my viewpoint on this whole situation and everything. Of course, we're gonna take this back because in order to understand, mm. you need a little bit of a context. Seems like the, uh, the formula for, for these, uh, these Braille disaster videos is to, uh, for you to understand, we have to go through the entire history of Braille for two uploads in a row. Because that was the last thing they uploaded, right? Yeah, one day ago, six hours ago, we're giving you the second video in a row of summarizing Braille. Dude, fuck you. Stay put. To the backstory. So I started doing tutorial videos on YouTube a long time ago. And yes, I am going to tell this story, but I'm not going to give you all of the same mm. details that you've heard in maybe five to ten other videos doing the tutorials and seems like this video has the same problem as all of his other videos have which is he does not know what the fuck to talk about youtube did change my life there's nothing much. new to talk I about i want you to understand that teaching skateboarding on youtube was very very looked down upon it was a thing that was not cool it was a thing that sort of ostracized me from the skateboard industry mm. that's what did it guys once you start making YouTube tutorials, that's that'll that's what'll do you in with the skateboarding industry. Not that he's a little freak. That wasn't it. As a whole, the core skateboard industry definitely was not like, wow, Aaron's doing skateboard videos on on YouTube. That is so cool. We love it. They were like, wow, that is the lamest. All these fucking YouTube skaters. It's crazy. All the YouTube skaters. Fucking Aaron Cairo, Andy Schrock, John Hill, they all have this complex about the skateboard industry where they they kind of like pat themselves on the back for making careers in skateboarding without having to, um, you know, like work in the skateboard industry. But they all hold these grudges, you know, like it's fine that you guys are all like very weird unlikable like immature dudes and that's why you make kids content whatever like obviously adults aren't really going to respect you um as their peers because what you're doing is i don't know we i mean in aaron cairo's case 
starting a, a kid's YouTube channel and then funneling, not paying your employees anything, paying the minimum wage, essentially, in San Francisco, and then funneling probably over half the money into Scientology. It's like, you wonder why people don't like you. It's like, oh, they, they had a grudge on me because uh, I was doing tutorials. Thing ever. So my whole life, I've been part of whatever people making fun of me behind. Oh, shut the fuck up. Dude, look at you. Like, look at yourself. Look at the hat you're wearing. Look at the t-shirt you're wearing. You are lame. Like, and that's fine. Be fucking lame, but don't keep victimizing yourself, man. These dudes are all lame as fuck and then cry about how people call them what they are. On my back, I'm very used to that, and that's totally fine. And now we're in this situation where, yes. Why, why would I call Ricky right now? I'm going to watch this first. I'll watch this, and then if I need to talk to Ricky, I'll talk to Ricky. Gabe Cruz has left. You saw the video yesterday. Many other people have left, and it's kind of this weird situation where people are moving on with their lives. I thought we were going to stay young forever. I thought we were going to just ride skateboards and have fun for the rest of our lives. But you know, there comes to a time <laughs> where there are changes to be had. And I do want to give you, so, so in the backstory, yes, I moved to California to become a professional skateboarder. I failed. So everyone's quitting, by the way, <clears throat> because that one kid, sit down. Sorry, this is going to be a difficult multitasking stream for me. So I got to contain the dog. Hey, hey, hey. It's all right. This is actually a good thing, monster, because now I can open the windows without you jumping onto the roof. And that'll give both of us um, an easier time. Um, let's see. Why I quit Braille. Shh, 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 relax. Yeah, this guy. Wait. Yeah. IRS e file is open. I'm sorry about this. Snap your W2 the ad. and file your taxes 100% free. In there the whole time, so I never really had a chance to defend myself. <laughs> I feel like this is a this is a, like the first chance I have to defend myself. Let's see. Yeah, Nathan's probably gonna be on this channel. Shh. I feel like I can say some stuff about it, but I don't really know what. And there's so much stuff in my head that I don't know how to put this in a cohesive order. So this is probably gonna be a messy video. I will say, working there was fun. Getting to skate with my friends was fun. Getting to skate in front of literally millions of people was an amazing opportunity. But I had to do what's best for me. And looking long term, nothing was happening for me there. And Going forward, I don't think anything would happen for me there. And to be really honest, I was I just got tired of being one of the main faces of a world famous YouTube channel and still struggling. And I decided it's gonna be like that. I may as well just do it for myself. This video is not gonna be all YouTube and professional. Like I'm just gonna be real with you guys. I'm not gonna <laughs> crash on anyone. I'm just trying, trying to be more transparent because you know over the past couple of years, skaters have gotten a lot of heat lately. Me being one of them, people see me on camera and if, like, if anything's going on, then it's our faces that you see. And they would see me and just think that I was so boring and negative and all this. And it's like yeah, if there's anything going on, then it's our faces. Like we're on the camera specifically for you guys to understand. So I, what he's saying, because this guy is not the most articulate gentleman online what i think what he's saying is that if there was anything like brewing behind the scenes and like because these dudes were doing daily uploads if they weren't like ultra enthusiastic um uh, but like in their demeanor or whatever then like it would show on camera and people were, would criticize them so these dudes were basically getting paid 20 dollars an hour in san francisco which is nothing. It's one of the most expensive areas to live in the world. Um, and uh, yeah, they were unhappy because I mean, he'll he'll explain the rest, but kind of. I feel like it's best. I feel like if I just give my perspective. Over the past two years, the skaters are the ones making the videos. We grinded hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, probably like definitely over 600 videos. Video every single day, never missed an upload. Videos on another channel, and I didn't agree with how we were being valued for that. And there was also some other stuff where it just made me not very happy. Yeah, so not getting paid enough, obviously. Be doing that because we were doing literally the most important part. But even if we wanted stuff to change, we can't really do anything about it. And then we would get the heat for how we were feeling in the videos and whatever effects that had on the videos, especially like long term. And I said because there's only so long that we can essentially like put the channel on our back and keep up the same output and everything. And when the incentives aren't focused on creating good videos, you know, like I said, there's only so long that we could do that. And I wouldn't even have talked about this. So yeah, they're being forced to make, or not forced, but their job was to make videos every single day and then not get paid and then... Aaron Cairo, who it's his company, he was like not even there any of the time. So these guys were just, I guess, following whatever template was there. And I don't even know about Braille's financial situation anymore, really, because their videos don't do very well. Because 
I mean, it's kind of, it's sort of a P-Rod situation somewhat where like the head guy has basically delegated the daily operational tasks of making the videos, which is supposed, which is supposed to be what Braille is about. I don't know how much money Braille generates from having their stuff in Walmart. And if they even still do that, like Braille premium app, um, but yeah, so like the he's paying these dudes minimum wage who are the ones uh, who are carrying the channel essentially while he goes off and deals with his uh, passion of, uh, you know, climbing the ranks in Scientology. This stuff in this video, if it weren't for people making videos about us, they got hundreds of thousands of views. And then so many people out there now think that stuff. I was working there the whole time, so I never really had a chance to defend myself. I feel like this is, a, this is a, like the first chance I have to defend myself. Like I said, I'm not trying to trash Braille. I'm not trying to trash anyone. The skaters there are my good friends. It was fun working there. I'm just trying to kind of defend myself a little bit. And yeah, getting past all that, me quitting, it's like, you know, in class, in school, when you wait till the last minute to do like an assignment <laughs> and then you would, you would do like a day of or something because you had to. Well, right now I'm, I have to make some moves. So I'm, I'm forcing myself to do that because I could, I could have stayed. It was a possibility, but I'm forcing myself to do what's best for me. So yeah, I'm hyped. I'm going to be grinding as hard as I possibly can on my own stuff and I'm excited for it. You guys have followed me this whole time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. If you want to, if you want to support me, you can check out, uh, I'm on all social media. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. He doesn't really say much specifically, but it is just saying, uh, we were not getting paid enough. Um, and I can understand that from their perspective too. And there's a, fuck, maybe I have it in my screenshots, but there was an interesting comment exchange from the, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I mean, I can't do anything about the, uh, the windows, but, um, let's see, Braille. Um, ch -ch -ch. There was an interesting comment from the Braille account that was in response to something else. Um, somebody calling them out for not paying their people enough. Let's see. If I can't find it, then I'll just uh, not worry about it. But anyway, someone I'll 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 fucking uh I'll deal with it later. But the basically the Braille account like. Probably Aaron saying it because he says similar stuff in this video. So he was like, why don't you pay your employees properly? And he was like, oh, $20 an hour to ride your skateboard and have fun? Like, what could possibly what could possibly be better than that? Um, and, yeah, I think that was just like either he's like bullshitting intentionally or that's just like a very naive, um, like, understanding of, like, having people make, come up with ideas, shoot, film, um at, or you know be in the videos shoot them and edit them every single day it's like he's like w at what point would that like would skateboarding be fun if you had to make a fucking youtube video about it every single day probably not so he's basically working these people into the ground for almost no pay and then wondering why they're all unhappy that that i took up teaching skateboarding and then I did really well teaching skateboarding. And then through teaching skateboarding, I did get a pro model skateboard and become a professional skateboarder. And for all the people in the comments who say, you didn't earn it, oh my you're God. not good enough at who skateboarding. Cares? I completely understand. And I don't even Ew. necessarily disagree with you at all. I'm not gonna say I'm the best skateboarder there ever existed. Look at him, he's such a little fucking freakazoid, man. I don't even necessarily disagree with you at all. I'm not going to say I'm the best skateboarder there ever existed. I'm not going to say I'm the worst skateboarder that ever existed. If we were in a... Uh, it's a shame that the internet exists because if we were in like the med like a medieval era, Aaron Cairo would be such a low-ranking surf. <sighs> he would be like a, a, the, some king. A, some, in somebody's kingdom, he would be like the king's personal uh, punching bag. Like... <laughs> If the king had a bad day, he would just go into his chambers and, and beat the shit out of Aaron Cairo. None of that matters and none of the opinions <laughs> matter. What matters is if I can teach the person on the other end of that screen uh. a trick. That's my goal. That's my purpose. And it's interesting. So we're going to go all the way back to that. So then I start making videos with this kid, guy, whatever you want to call him. His name is... Yeah, be careful around that. The uh, relationship between Braille and, and kids is a little rocky at the moment. Lance Silber, the hashtag skate god. And there was this moment there where I started started teaching him and he came from behind the camera to in front of the camera and we did a whole series, Lance Learns. So yes, now we no longer have Dave to plan, film, and make all those videos. So it's gonna be, the content is definitely going to be changing. And I want you to understand that from here forward. And what you're gonna get, I actually have no idea. But it's gonna go back to the roots of this company, how it originally started, 
where it originally came from. Mm. Teaching tutorials. Mm. Yes, we are gonna make weird boards, weird mm. videos, but I'm gonna actually give you the backstory of how the weird board oh, videos God. even came about. So Lance and I are doing these videos all teaching centric. They're all related around teaching people how to skateboard. And we start building a community and it's awesome. And then one day we do this live awesome. skate support. Actually it wasn't a live skate support, it was just a skate support. And it was this kid and Lance titled the video Walmart Skate Support because the kid in the video had a Walmart board. And the video did really well and he said, you know, there's something to this. And then he said, we should review a Walmart board. And I said, Lance, that is the worst idea I've ever heard. And I will have no part of it. Wait, because... this is this is the kid. And Lance titled the video. This is the, the, wait, I just I don't understand. This is Aaron Cairo's co-worker. Is that accurate? Is this who Aaron Cairo's getting his ideas from? No? Yes? <laughs> it's not Local Joe. Don't bring Local Joe into this, man. It's Sunday. It's Local Joe's day off. Walmart skate support? Because the kid in the video had a Walmart. Oh, board. okay. I get it. That's, I got it. The, that's the kid who they're trying to help. And the video did really well. And he said, you know, <laughs> there's something to this. And then he said, we should review a Walmart board. And I said, Lance, that is the worst idea I've ever heard. And I will have no part of it because the skateboard community will make fun of me so bad. And it was kind of funny to like operate in your life based on what oh. another person's opinion of you would mean. And then later on. Okay, I, dude, all of these, it sounds exactly like a fucking John Hill monologue. They're all so salty. That, that people like mock them and look down on them for making 700 videos about Walmart boards where the whole like there's no content to the video. The only thing that a video like that is designed to do is to like placate or appease these like f stupid fucking things about YouTube thumbnails that get people to click on them that are just like exploits of like basic human psychology like. People like clicking on videos that have money in the title, like this Marquise Brownlee one um, or Marquez Brownlee. He actually makes good videos, but you get the idea. Reviewing Walmart skateboard is just like a, a little, uh, it's just a fucking trick to try to, you know, get people to click on your shit. It me so bad. And it was kind of funny to like operate in your life based on what another person's opinion of you would mean and these guys this dude says shit like this it's funny to operate in your life based off the opinion of that somebody else might have and it's like dude everybody does that every single fucking day ever and also as a person whose job it is to get people to click on your videos of course you're you you're going to try and do that like you make shitty videos about walmart boards because people will click on them because they have like you know an appetizing thumbnail to children i hate this fucking uh holier than now perspective that that dudes have um on skate youtube where they're like yeah i don't like care what anybody else like thinks about me it's just like a cope because all you produce is garbage um, that's why John Hill is always so fucking defensive um, and self-righteous in his videos because he makes crap videos and then wants to justify them like I don't care what anybody thinks it's like that's all you're capable of doing and then later on is interesting because then we did make that video but Lance did the video alone so I was like I will have nothing to do with it and he said okay fine I will review the video alone so it was Lance alone reviewing a Walmart board and talking about the different parts of it and what I was gonna do. And it was just hilarious. And then mm. that video did well. And then we ended up making like 200 other Walmart board videos, which is kind of part of the thing that I love about YouTube. Mm. You make a video and it does well and it sort of takes- And then you like repeat that same video 200 times. How many Walmart boards could you possibly review? Like, how fun would it, like, making a video about one Walmart board? Okay. All right. Fine. You know? Maybe. But doing it 200 times, it's like, you guys obviously had no fucking ideas. None of this, I, 
none of this shit was about like you know passion or trying to like you know push skateboarding YouTube because this guy treats his own channel like with a lot of reverence. Like he opens up and he talks about his numbers and shit. Like you guys are fucking algorithm chasers. Takes you down this path and you end up in a place where you maybe never even thought you were going. And maybe that was not necessarily your intention even. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that place that you end up is great. And sometimes that place where you end up is not great. So for me, again, my personal goal. That's because, like I said, he was following, uh, Braille was fully following like, you know, the algorithm and just like designing their videos entirely based off of what is kind what is working at that particular time and i think those strategies are are typically like pretty short lived because they're often like they're pretty gimmicky you know i melted every candy into one piece um <laughs> Like, yeah, maybe you could do this three times, but you're not going to be able to sustain a YouTube channel for five years, like melting pieces of candy and then swallowing them. Goal is to teach as many people as possible how to ride a skateboard. Again, that feeling that you get from landing your first kickflip, I think there's nothing like it. And I'd like to give that feeling to as many people as possible. And with the video content, what I would love to... How did he go from making videos about Walmart boards to like, you know how much joy it gives pe him to like teach people how to kickflip. The feeling that you get from landing your first kickflip, I think there's nothing like it. And I would like to give that feeling to as many people as possible. And with the video content, what I would love to do is make videos that I really care about, make videos that really matter to me. Now with saying that, do I think that I'm always, like every single video that I make is gonna be incredible and a banger? I absolutely hope so. But <laughs> How can you say that? Let's look at their channel. True skate versus skater IRL. The shocking truth about New Balance skate shoes. Dude. Uh, unorthodox ways to skate a skate park. Oh, Ricky's on here. What is a stash board? Wheel of Misfortune. Dude, hang it up, man. 25K? Uh, pressure flip only game of skate. I skate stopped our entire skate park. These numbers aren't looking good. I think they should just stop. Honestly, like, just erase the whole channel. This this whole ch this entire page is a testament to greed, to human greed. Am I going to make some videos that are just not great? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, I think a better question would be, when was the last time Aaron Cairo made a good video? Well, just being honest, but we, if ever. we are not going to continue making seven videos a week. That is the big announcement here. So we're going to try to come up with around three, maybe if we're really pushing it, four videos. But... My goal here is to improve the quality of those three videos and make them better. Mm. I also want to do teaching videos every week. It's interesting because when you make this into kind of like, dude, you well, need to get a new this job, warehouse man. and we have all these employees and there's payroll and there's huge overhead and there's all these costs and it gets very, very stressful and it gets very difficult to manage. As a small business owner going through 2020 and then forward, as a skateboard small business owner, it has been the hardest skateboard trick I've ever had to do. I've told that to people before. Running a business is the hardest skateboard trick I've ever had to do. Yeah, you just fall down, get back up, fall down, get back up and keep on pushing forward. And I'm doing my absolute best to create an environment that is a great place. And um, yeah, it's a rough situation sometimes. It's not always easy. So, so I mean, I think as a as a not business owner here's what i kind of like understand is if you want good employees and you want to retain your employees you need to compensate them in a manner that is reflective of you know their value at the company so aaron is in a in a difficult position because if you're a scientologist you have to keep giving them money like you don't just get to like you don't just get to stop dumping your money into Scientology. So he's like squeezing his employees and making them do all the work while he's, you know, whatever profit or money that he is still making, he's uh sending probably half of that shit to the church. So he probably does not have 
anywhere near as much money to be spending on Braille as he should have. I want to make videos that get back to the core basics of the company. I want to make videos that I really care about. I want to make videos that really matter. And I want to build and support a community mm. that is positive and that is thankful. You know, the <laughs> thing about skateboarding is that it is so raw. It is so real. It is, it is just what it is. And you get out of it what you put into it. And I love pushing forward and building that. That's community. great. This fucking monologue of skating is raw. You get out of it what you put into it from the guy who's made 200 Walmart board setup reviews and like, that we wonder why your fucking channel is dying. You got out of it exactly what you've been putting in. Community. Yes, we got into this place, which was a very interesting place to be in, where we were making tutorials and that was the basis of what we were doing. And then we started in on weird boards. And then it sort of took us down this pathway. And I feel like I went so far down that rabbit hole of weird boards that I forgot what my purpose was. I forgot mm. what my original intention was. <laughs> Now, a good it's funny too, you know, to come to a realization like this where, you know, dudes get all spiritual, like, oh, I lost track of 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 who I was and, and what I was doing. Not when the videos were getting, you know, five hundred thousand views for a a like a jelly bean board. No, no, no. At that point in time, there were no problems. Nothing ever occurred to me that something might be fucking rotten here. But after, you know, we hammered it into the floor and everybody lost interest in our videos. And I started realizing, I was like, you know what? This just doesn't sit right with me anymore. It's like, dude, just fucking tell us the truth. You know, people stopped clicking on your videos and you need to re-strategize. All your employees are, are quitting and two of them were pedophiles. You are fucked. You're, you need, you, you are requiring a massive fucking overhaul right now. A mixture of tutorials and weird boards mm. is great. Be boards that I forgot what my purpose was. I forgot what my original intention was. Now a good mixture of tutorials and weird boards is great because the weird boards pull in a new audience. The tutorials then teach. What new audience? You've made 200 weird board videos teach that new audience how to skateboard. And I have many ways to teach people how to skateboard, whether it's free tutorial videos on YouTube. So it's crazy too that, you know, we're getting this video about the future of Braille skateboarding and his proposal for how the channel is gonna be different, by the way, is we're gonna be doing the same exact shit that we were already doing. There have been zero new ideas proposed in this video, the only thing that he said is, okay, um, we are going to do what we were doing, but instead of doing it seven days a week, we're going to do it three days a week. And that is going to change something. Instagram, TikTok, whatever platform. Then we have the skate supports. Then we have Skateboarding Made Simple and even the newly launched Braille Skateboarding Academy where I personally teach you how to ride a skateboard. So there's many ways there, but I do want to make the best, highest quality tutorial videos that I can personally make. And that's the purpose there. And then I do still want to make weird board videos. How weird and how far we're gonna go down into that rabbit hole again, I have no idea, but we will, Dude, we will. You gotta come up with a new strategy, a new plan, a new fucking concept. You can just make less videos of the same shit you've been doing that's already completely fucking ran through and then expect that to revitalize your channel. We'll have a very fun time creating new content and you never know. Sometimes I just wake up in the middle of the night and I go, oh. you know what I should do? A music video. I'm gonna pop some trees. Only got two dollars in my pocket. Oh my God. What a vile human. Absolutely disgusting. No wonder he wears that hat all the time. And I love that sort of creative outlet. And I feel like... <laughs> that creative outlet. <laughs> I mean, what year is it? And I love that sort of creative outlet. And I feel like as a video creator, we've been sort of stuck in a rut. And mm. I think as... The 
So how are you going to get out of that rut doing the same thing? The audience of Braille skateboarding, you guys have felt that as well. And I read your comments and I see some of you guys say, you know, I'm not trying to be rude, but the content is getting a little bit stale. It's getting a little bit repetitive, etc." And I am the one to blame for that. You guys can fully blame me. You can say, Aaron, you suck. You're the worst person. Yeah, of course, everyone's going to blame you. You're not like fucking, uh, you know, looking like you're an accountable person for ignoring things until they got to a horrific point and then being like, yeah, you guys can blame me. It's your company. Blame for that. You guys can fully blame me. You can say, Aaron, you suck. You're the worst person ever. I can totally have that. It's totally okay. But yes, <laughs> it, it is up to me to sort of rehash through my own personal writer's block, make some videos that I really care about, make some videos that really matter to me, and that then I can push those videos out and go like, wow, I made that video. I think it was great. This is a crazy revelation he's having that he should start doing is uh, his job. Great. Instead of under instead of underpaying teenagers to run his entire organization. If the video doesn't do well, it doesn't get good views or whatever. But if I'm personally proud of it, then I'm more stoked on the product that I'm creating. Whoa. Oh. Listen to this, guys. And even if the video doesn't do well, it doesn't get good views or whatever, but if I'm personally proud of it, then I'm more stoked on the product that I'm creating. Wow. He's having a crazy realization. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's fun as, as, as a fully grown adult man. And it's funny to have this uh, epiphany right now where you're like, ah, uh, the views, you know, they don't really matter to me anymore. Like, I'm going to start making YouTube videos from my soul. It's like, at, you were having that realization after you've already, like, d shot your own YouTube channel into the foot by making the same video every single day for fucking 10 years. And, na and now that that doesn't get views anymore like it used to, now you're having the epiphany that, that fucking views aren't important. You see, like, you know, what I'm trying to explain, which is all of these, like, realizations are are not predicated on some personal, you know, moment. They're still tied to the same thing, which is now we're just, like, getting, a, you know, he's just giving you an excuse. Um, um, as, like, now he's ex exhausted his earlier strategy. Now he's like, I'm not abandoning that strategy because it's not working anymore. I'm now abandoning that strategy, you know, because spiritually I've moved on from it. It's like bull fucking shit. Proud of it, then I'm more stoked on the product that I'm creating. So the main key thing that I'm trying to do here is grow skateboarding, teach you on the other. No, you're not. You're not, your goal is to not grow skateboarding. Fuck all that. Your goal is to make videos that make money. The end of that computer screen, how to ride a skateboard. That's the number one focus. Now, second to that, we'll be bringing in a new audience in to teach them how to ride a skateboard. So I definitely want to get out. I definitely want to go to skate parks more. I definitely want to do community events more and various things like that that just involve the community because I love, love, love that. And that's what keeps me going. That's what inspires me. <laughs> that's where we're at. Fuck you. There are big changes afoot. So do not expect a daily video from this point forward. If you do get a daily video, that was a very strange week. There might be some times where that occurs but most likely there will not be a daily video. And for all the people that are gonna say, this is the end of Braille, this is the end, you know, I am gonna keep making these videos until the wheels fall off. And right now the wheels are still on, we're still rolling. Barely. How long are we giving Braille, guys? Uh, uh, my goal is to grow skateboarding. That's what inspires me at the end of the day. It's not the cult that I'm in that takes half my money that I desperately need to keep feeding or I'll have nothing. They'll put me in the chamber and torture me. <laughs> they'll put me in a, they'll put him in the same exact position he would have been in a medieval context. Two years? Jesus, I'd be surprised. Seems like the uh, indoor skate park model YouTube channel is not aging that well right now. On and we're keeping pushing forward. 
I do want to thank all of Ooh, you. Oh, Ricky's in here. Ricky, Ricky's asking for help. <laughs> Ricky, are you in Australia right now? Ricky said, any advice for Rick chat? <laughs> you, why are you talking in third person, Ricky? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, what's 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 in for YouTube right now? Um what's the next big content idea? Call him for for what? What am I going to tell Ricky? I don't know what to tell Ricky. He's fucked. The Braille warehouse is going up in smoke. Become a streamer? He already streams. You raided me and I missed it. Damn, how many viewers did you hit me with, Ricky? How many how many viewers? I'd like to know. 250? My dog. Oh, you're fine, Ricky. Ricky, if or, or is that like an influx because of um because of Braille drama that you have 250? Um Listen, if you're pulling in 250 viewers though on Twitch, you can do anything. Let's take a look at Ricky's channel right now. Let's see. Ricky Glazer. Okay, well. Growing probably not going to want to do this anymore, Ricky. I would hang that one up. If I were you, that's just my opinion. see what else we got Ooh, not a video about walmart boards ricky oh man <laughs> call me i'll explain more right, i'll explain in a second um okay wow an ai uh an ai thumbnail no skaters are talking about this. Oh, you made a unicycling video. Um, all right. Let's see, Ricky. Hang on. The classic get Ricky Glazer on the horn. What the fuck? Uh, 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 in a world. All right. I'm calling you, Ricky. Is this on speaker? Uh, it, should be it should be ringing. Who the hell is Ricardo? Yo. Big Rick. What's good? What is up? I put this on like that. Uh, I, I can hear you. We're... Yo, chat. What is up, chat? How are we feeling today? Are we enjoying the Joe stream? Dude, don't you talk to my chat. I'll let me handle that. <laughs> um, okay, so first things first, Joe, is I gave you a nice little raid. I was talking to my chat. They're like, I was like, who should I raid? And they're like, yeah, raid Joe. It'll be funny. And I was like, all right, yeah, he's live. Okay, cool. And then I gave him a little preface like, all right, like, you know, he's he's not everyone in skateboarding is, is sort of as kind-hearted as Ricky as uh toxic positivity is ricky mm. so just keep that in mind and then i raid you we didn't notice which is fine and then just straight away go into the braille combo <laughs> it was literally a sign from god Joa. Yeah. Do you, are you a spiritual man uh no no i just follow whatever the hottest drama is at the moment and right now that happens to be your freaky little boss Honestly, though, the timing was so funny. It was literally like 20 seconds after it happened. You're like, what's up with this Braille stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for the 250 viewers. What's up, Ricky Glazer watchers? Yeah. Well, what are they? Um, what are they? Do you have a name for your fans, by the way? The Glazers? Yeah. We're experimenting with Prima Donnas is one I'm floating and Grunt Gang. Because every time I have the mic, you can hear me make these terrible noises when I try to do like an impossible song. What's, kind of like, <laughs> what's the Prima Donna uh, story? Like Primo. Primo Donnas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
comedy I, gold. I know. I, I'd go with Glaze Nation if I were you, but you know, it's your chat always loves to say Glaze. What do they say? They they go Ricky till I glaze her or something. Oh, she, she. <laughs> yeah. What's your? Do you have a middle name or do you not want to say it? Uh, we can withhold that. I okay. Guess. All right. I was I was gonna say that joke works better if you have three words, but whatever. Okay. What's the uh? Yeah, so I, I, well, you were looking at my stream numbers or whatever. I thought I should give you some context as I collabed with like this famous streamer girl. Oh, Maya Higa. Stream. Yeah, did you see that? I didn't see it, but I think I saw something on Instagram and you were you were talking about it. And back when those streamers were like, you know, doing skateboarding streams, I was like, this is a great opportunity um, to you know harass some people. And then I saw you you hopped on it before anybody else. You sniffed that shit out. You fucking content vulture. Yeah, I was on top of it. Um, but it was really fun. And and she kind of was like, Ricky, you blowing it by like not being on Twitch. So that's kind of what jump started my Twitch uh, events right now. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, what were we talking about? I was one of the. Th oh yeah, okay. Should we talk about Braille and stuff? Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're up to it. <laughs> yeah, this is my official preface, okay, to the chat as well. It's like one, I actively work for Braille. Two, I consider Aaron Cairo to be my friend. And three, I think Aaron Cairo is a good person as well. So like you can take all those things for what you will. You can take it for what you will. I guess four as well. I am not a Scientologist. I am not religious at all. Um, so you can factor all those things how you want. Um but, I mean, you know, from what you watched us then, I think your takes were, like, pretty accurate. I think, like, everything you said was, like, relatively on point. Apart from not understanding that who Lance was and you're thinking it, that is that little uh, yeah. kid. I, I, I figured out that the 10-year-old ginger kid was not uh, Ricky Glazer's right-hand man, but it took me a second. I love the chat when they say, like, he's at gunpoint. <laughs> Sigma Ricky. <laughs> Dude, I mean, ignore the chat. Ignore the chat. They're going to no, trying to distract the you. I love the chat. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. With with all the Scientology stuff, like I do feel like it's obviously it's an interesting topic. Like you know, we all love South Park. We all watch uh, Leah Remini or whatever. Like great, you know. But at the same time, is like Aaron is just a dude. Like he's just a dude living his life. Like people really seem to think that it's like this business is owned by Scientology and they're doing this and they're gonna get Ricky in and Gabe in and blah blah blah. Like. It's definitely not that dramatic. It's just like, dude is living life doing his own life. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, that's one I don't thing. Know. I don't know if that's the best defense, Ricky. I got to be honest with you. I don't know. But it's not like defense, but it's just like, you know, if you work for, if you work for a local McDonald's or whatever, mm -hmm. do you know what religion the manager is or the owner of that store is? And, like, does it even matter, right. really? Well, I mean, I'm, I know I'm not informed or researched enough to get into a Scientologist debate with you right now. But I will say, you know, I think people have a generally a pretty hostile reaction to Scientology because there is a lot of information out there that pretty like fundamentally exposes that there's a lot of corrupt and abusive, you know, behavior systemically within that religion. So and it's a much smaller religion than something like you know christianity or or you know fucking catholicism or or something like yeah. that there's a lot of you know very powerful people that are you know working together and there's plenty of documentaries out there you can check out that highlight some pretty uh negative shit so you know <laughs> yeah shout out to my girl leah remney that's who i mentioned earlier and i i don't know the chat seems to think that i'm defending i'm definitely not defending at all but I'm just saying, I feel like people get the conspiracy a little bit more, um, I don't know, they think it is a little bit more intense than it actually is. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, um, we'll uh, queue up a, a nice uh, Scientology informational video. I mean, I don't know. I feel like the conspiracy isn't that Scientology is, is sketchy. The conspiracy is that Scientology isn't that sketchy. That's kind of, that's kind of my, uh, my no, opinion I, on it. I don't it. even mean like related to that. I just mean like that they think Braille is like, old, like is under control of Scientology. Well, the, I mean, I think the problem is, I think I said this kind of already, but the issue is that, you know, 
Aaron obviously doesn't pay the people a fair wage who who work for him. And it's clear that you have to spend a lot of money in Scientology to just be in it and also to climb the ranks to the degree that, you know, Aaron Cairo has climbed it. And he's running this, you know, kids YouTube channel where he's talking about how his passions are all about um, teaching people how to skateboard. And it's like, meanwhile, you know, the kids Aaron, that you're directly uh, responsible I'm for live stream aren't even Sorry, being kind of... yeah, aren't even being fairly fairly compensated so you know it looks like a bunch of bullshit to to me yeah but i don't know like i i, I guess i my approach is a bit more passive and you know i obviously work for them and everything but my approach is like view braille for what braille is and what braille does not what homie's personal life is you know what i mean and that's where like i think all the takes that you said about like putting love into the videos, making Walmart videos, all that kind of stuff, I think you're 100% spot on. And I think, you know, if you just continually don't put in the love, it's going to show and the viewership is going to show. So you're you're telling me to separate the art from the artist right now? Yeah, kind of. Like, maybe not completely, but just more than people generally do. Okay. All right. Well, um, you might have convinced a couple of people in, in here to, uh, you know, ease off well, on I mean Braille. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I'm not even trying to ease off or whatever. I just thought it's like funny too. I just thought it, I just wanted to tell you about the raid thing because I thought that was so funny. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> the yeah, timing that was, the timing was insane. I appreciate the 250. Yeah. Um, Wait, how? What do you think of Twitch, Joe? I see you only read the Twitch chats and never the YouTube. No, I have them both the, open now. I mean, usually, I mean, here's kind of the thing is. If I'm going to be totally honest, like regarding Twitch, like I had a community of people on there that was, it's not as public as YouTube. Like I stream on my second channel on YouTube if I do stream on there. And I was just kind of like, you know, there's skate streaming is not like a competitive thing. I was kind of just like doing my own, my own thing. And I didn't want to like, you know, deal with any drama if I said some stupid shit on a live stream or whatever. But yeah. now I'm just like, I'm streaming on YouTube a little bit more and I'm just like, fuck it, whatever. Um, if I say some dumb shit, then I say some dumb shit and it's fine. Um, I'll just deal with the consequences. But um, yeah, I was kind of just like in my own, I don't even necessarily want to call it an echo chamber, but a, a bit of a safe space. That's why I was using Twitch a lot. And there are pros of using Twitch like versus YouTube, but a big appeal to me is just like, you know, I had a lot of returning viewers that like, you know, they already liked me. They like were very into the streams. And now like on YouTube, it it sends your live stream into the YouTube algorithm and anybody can click on it. And, you know, some people, I'm a lot more self-conscious when I'm on YouTube about, you know, what the average viewer is going to think because they might not be that familiar with me. But um, yeah, I'm sending it a bit, so. Yeah, sick. You know, Joe, I actually hung out with Dane Berman the other day and one of my questions to him was, what do you think of Gifted Hater? What, you want to know what he said? What did he say? <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh yeah, he's like, I'm definitely more of a fan of Gifted Hater than I am of Wecking Ball. Fuck Wecking Ball was his basic sentiment. <laughs> wow, Wecking Ball, catching another stray, damn. Um, yeah. Okay, well, well, thank you. Tell, tell Dane I say thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, will do. All right. But yeah, I guess I won't take up too much of your time. Um, I don't know what really was the point of this, but yeah, I just thought it was so funny that I rated and then straight away you did that. That was funny. And thank you again for the for the viewers. Yes, of course. All right. Twitch skaters got to stick together, brother. I'll see you next stop, Ricky. <laughs> All right, see you. Bye, chat. All right, later. What do we think? What do we think about old Pickle Ricky? That seemed like some uh, some damage control. Now, I like Ricky. Ricky's my boy. Um, but I'm not... Uh, I find it difficult to separate, you know, Braille from... Uh, you know, from the guy who runs it. Um, and I think if we, if I really wanted to, we could do like some sort of, uh, like, okay, because here's the thing, I guess, this is what Ricky's saying, right? He's saying like, you can be a Scientologist 
while not while still being like a good dude. And I think that sentiment is something that most people would probably disagree with who've done even a little bit of research about Scientology or or how it's structured. And also, you know, not to mention like Scientologists, if you've ever met one, they're just weird fucking people. They're weird like schmoozy, you know. They look like they they look like they're hiding something. So, um yeah, maybe for the next stream I'll I'll come with a laundry list of uh because that's the thing. If I, I wish I was better prepared to talk about Scientology. Like I watched a documentary about it like three years ago, and I like it was about some I think some girl who was basically like essentially like enslaved and she had to escape. Like some terrible, terrible shit was happening to this girl. I think it was on HBO. And she like worked on a cruise or something. I can only very vaguely remember, but I, I watched it and I was like, God damn, this is fucked. You know, and it's fucked in a way where a lot of people have to know what's happening for it to function. Um, do you know how deep Aaron's involvement into Scientology is? He runs the fucking uh, department, the San Francisco branch of Scientology now. So how deep is he? He's fucking balls deep in it. <clears throat> Uh, so, and that's the thing. It's, it's also, it's, it's not like Aaron is just, just like, you know, a random Scientology scrub anymore. He's one of the big dogs. So yeah, not good. It's not, it doesn't look good. And I really don't think like, you know, outside of any of the Scientologist shit as well, like just paying your, your employees $20 and then turning around and being like, oh, I thought everybody liked playing with their skateboard. It's like, dude, fuck you. You know what you're doing. Like, how could you not? Um, like skateboarding isn't intrinsically fun. If you lock somebody, you know, in a dungeon and you slide them a, tra a meal tray underneath their door um, and all they have in their dungeon is a skateboard doesn't mean skateboarding's fun. Skateboarding's fun when you get to, you know, go outside and do it with your friends and, and do skateboarding the way that skateboarding was meant to be done. Just because you're on a skateboard, if your work involves skateboarding, making a fucking YouTube video about skateboarding every single day for $20 an hour, it's probably not going to be that fun anymore. And, and saying that skateboarding is automatically fun is just a justification for underpaying, you know, the employees that are carrying the channel. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I think that's probably concluding this, uh, this Braille stream here. Oh, teaching Ludwig how to kickflip. Oh, he's making, there's a tier list there. Uh, anyway, what else is happening, everybody? Uzi Walker uploaded. Lamont Halt Street Part. This is a classic. I just watched that. What is this? I'll sub if you watch all of this. What is it? It better. It better be good. The problem with when I have all the streams or all the chats of, oh my God, I have to start copying and pasting shit. I can't really, um, I can't really watch this because I'm on YouTube. So it might get nuked, which would be a problem. When's the last resort vid coming? I don't know. I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> You know my what I honestly think <laughs> about Last Resort is I don't think any of those dudes that ride for Last Resort probably like me at all. <laughs> I think the only reason I still get Last Resort shoes is because it's probably <laughs> better to have me in them <laughs> than to not. Um, I talked to one of the dudes who owns it and he's, he's pretty chill, but as far as like, you know, the guys who make the videos and shit, I don't think any of those guys fuck with me. I think they'd probably prefer it if I had nothing to do with the brand. Um, so as far as, you know, if you want insider information on, on when the last resort video is coming out, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> I don't know anything. I don't know any more than you do. 
What are your thoughts on weight loss and skateboarding? Um, I don't, I, I, you know, it's tough to say. I've never like put on an Apple watch and then kind of like tried to track my, my calorie burning or anything like that. But my impression has always kind of been like, if you skate really hard, then you could probably, you probably burn quite a few calories. And like, if you're out all day skating with people, you probably burn calories. But if you're going to the skate park and you know, you're riding on really smooth, a really smooth, like pristine concrete surface. And you're, you know, maybe you're going off the Euro gap and doing like a couple manuals and shit. Like you're probably not really doing any like super intense cardio and i think a lot of skaters get sweaty is because they're outside in direct sunlight you know wearing fucking carhartt pants um a beanie and uh, a t-shirt they're basically you know exercising a little bit but like i i, I don't think you're i don't think you're I, I, i'm not an expert but i don't think you're burning that much from skating i think if I were you and I and I wanted to lose weight, I would keep skating and I would also do, you know, get on a seated biker, get on a treadmill or something and burn some burn some calories and skateboard. Um, I don't know, like, you know, if you're skating street and you have to like push a bunch, throw down like you have to sprint at a spot like push down or like, you know, push through like some terrible ground then you're going to burn some calories. But the way most people skateboard, which is they spend a lot of time standing still, and then they like use some like explosive energy in their legs to balance and stuff. I don't think that that's like, you know, optimal cardio necessarily. That's how I think about it anyway. Uh -uh. Skating on an empty stomach until you're drenched will help you lose weight top ramen diet on top dude it sounds like you're going out and then sweating all of the salt out of your body and then ref refilling the sodium again maximum lurker i don't think that's a particularly sustainable um <laughs> technique for weight loss watch the game show i can't it'll get it'll get nuked off youtube i already watched it though on uh previously all right what's this key key going all right hang on new hipster grom video let's check it out Me too, bro. The hell is this filming? Sometimes when uh, people are, f are filming skaters and they do the uh, the feet, the feet, face, feet, face, it kind of feels like the camera is like in a wave pool or just like in the ocean, you know, and it's on... It's on like a, a a tube or like a you know some kind of floaty, and every time a wave hits it, it kind of changes the trajectory. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I'm watching the clip, you know, from a boat. Watch the Louie video after, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's Neo's trick. song we're finally escaping off of emo island and we're finding refuge on uh shores of techno land oh combo alert
Everybody dock at Electronic Isle. I'm telling you, that's what's that's what's everybody's gonna be using electronic music. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Swagged out. No way. Oh, okay, I thought he was gonna hold it. Oh my god. You gotta chill with all of this. Well, I mean, why? You know? You're giving your viewers motion sickness with this. Rip the homies getting decapitated on the fish. E Cali life. doing what are pro skaters doing professional skateboarder i didn't spell that shit right <sighs> okay the following video features clips of experienced skateboarders do not attempt that's to what we're looking for activities in this video as most of you know to make these videos i film a lot i get a lot of clips sent in and i find a lot of videos online sadly tons of great tricks never get seen oh so aurelian and i find a lot of videos online Sadly, tons of great that shit tricks never get seen. Oh my god, he's a freak of nature. So I wanted to make a video of some of the best skateboarding clips out there. Go ahead and leave a timestamp of whatever clip is your favorite. Be sure to leave <laughs> this guy's a big Aurelian fanboy, eh? Some of the best skateboarding clips out there. Go ahead and leave a timestamp of whatever Alley oop switch nose. Clip is your favorite. Be sure oh, to leave into the revert like on the video. And with that said, let's get right into it. Wait, so this dude just steals? That's what this guy's channel's for? If I were in this video, I would I'd somebody DM Jack O'Grady and tell him to copyright strike this. This has 2.3 million views. <clears throat> Somebody get his ass. He also said in the beginning of this video, he said, I film a lot for these videos. You did not film a single one of these clips. These are filmed entirely by people that were not you and performed by people that were entirely not you. What are, what's, what's skate boxes footage? Does he have footage? A lot 10 new skaters you'll meet in 2024. Let's see. Who is this? We're going to meet a guy in a wheelchair and a chick with a huge ass. My God. That thing is tremendous. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good year. Is this total babe a poser? 10 things skaters should never do? Damn. The problem with girls skateboarding? Ooh, who wants to watch? Who wants to watch the problem with girls skateboarding? I know I do. What's he going to say? 
what is he going to say the problem with girls skateboarding is? He's going to say, what did Nigel say back in the day? He said, like, I think girls are, like, too soft and, and supple and fragile and beautiful to skateboard. But that's just my opinion personally. I think only boys should do it. Remember Nigel said that shit in Thrasher? And everyone got mad at him. <laughs> Let's see what Skatebox says. In the past few years, the amount of female skateboarders has increased exponentially. Not too long ago, it was pretty crazy to see a and the last few years girl skating at the skate park, and now it's just a normal thing that no one even thinks about. Even though most people would agree that having more girls in skateboarding is a good thing, for some reason there's been a bit of backlash about how much coverage girls get in the skate industry. Mm. So I thought it would be interesting to make a video about it. I don't know what we're yelling about. Now I just want to. Whoa. That was a smooth edit there. I don't know what we're yelling about! Now, I just want to say that I'm 100% on board with girls in skateboarding. I want more girls to skate. I think it's awesome. I'm just <laughs> explaining an argument that I... Me too, by the way, for the record, everybody. Just so we all know that I, I think girls should be allowed, you know, to do whatever they want also keep seeing in the skateboarding community as well as things we can all do to make it better i'm sure a lot of people are going to dislike the video just for the title so do me a favor and leave a like to help me out let me know <laughs> Dude, what you think and fuck this guy <laughs> he intentionally clickbaits and says the problem with girls skateboarding and then says yeah people are probably going to be pissed about you know that really fucked up title that i made um so do me a favor and like the video in the comments you brought that upon yourself that can be said about the whole <laughs> thing asshole. check out the links in the description <laughs> and with that said let's get right into it actually before we do i want to give a quick shout out to oh, keeps for sponsoring today's you. video a lot of you may not know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness let's by not the time they're 35. It, some of the very first sponsored skateboarders were girls so they've pretty much been involved from the beginning there have always been more guys than girls who skated but it wasn't too crazy to see girls skateboarding when it first started out then as skateboarding began to develop and gain popularity throughout the 80s and 90s and early 2000s the demographics changed and there was a big difference between the number of guy skaters compared to the number of girl skaters of course there were plenty of popular female pros during that time frame Demographics changed, and there was a big difference between the number of guy skaters compared to the number of girl skaters. Oof. Maybe we shouldn't let girls skate. This guy is not making a good case. There was a big difference between the number of guy skaters. That was pretty horrific, wasn't it? of guy skaters compared to the number of girl skaters <laughs> of course there were plenty of popular female pros during that time frame but what is he talking about a lot of the times they are but there's also a decent amount of skateboarders who built a following and gained sponsorships oh my so god from less coverage than other girls who aren't as good at skateboarding but are seen as more attractive now, there's a good argument that either way, it's good to give girls more coverage since it helps expand the female skateboarding community, which I feel like is something that most people would agree with. The problem is, for the longest time, skateboarding was all about skill, and if people see girls getting put- <laughs> Holy moly. Really? Skill, and if people- The problem is, for the longest time, skateboard- All right, guys, what's better? Chris Joslin, Blizzard Flip, or uh, Snow Bunny? Press one for Chris Joslin, press two for Snow Bunny. We only get to have one in skateboarding. A lot of twos. All right, Chris. That's it, buddy. Pack it up, get a BBL, or you can fucking bounce. Skateboarding was all about skill, and if people see girls <laughs> getting posted just because they're seen as attractive, they tend to complain. Seen as attractive. Complain, since there's probably a ton of other girls who are way better skill-wise that they see as more deserving of coverage. I think as time goes on, more people are going to realize that there are different niches in skating, and nowadays you don't necessarily have to be the best skater to make a career out of skating, but there's always going to be those core skaters who only want the best of the best to get Wow. But there's always going to be those core skaters. Look at these core skaters, guys. These guys are core as fucking hell. These guys are core as shit. 
Mall grabbing ye old longboard with combat <laughs> boots on. God damn, is that core. Skaters who only want the best of the best to get coverage. Aside from that though, becoming a social media personality has become a career in and of itself, and a lot of skaters don't want to see people using skateboarding as a stepping stone. For example, if a girl wants to become a model, nowadays she can gain a pretty good following just from posting a few videos learning how to ollie, even if she doesn't really care about skating. When it comes to guys who become popular in skateboarding through social media, they pretty much all been skating for years, so even though they still get backlash as well, I don't think it's as bad since they've- God, this is like... Th this guy's videos are like listening to my friend's, uh... My friend's nephew, Goog, talk about Minecraft. When we play soccer, he wants to play with us, and he's always on my team. And he will just talk. He'll just tell me every single thing that he did last time he logged on to Minecraft. He has like a photographic memory for Minecraft. He's going to be the new mayor of Yapsville. Um, all right. Well, uh, let's watch the Zach Saracena part. Sixteen K. King fell off. Look at that font. Does anyone know what website the font is from? What do you think of Zone of Interest? Um, you know, Zone of Interest made me think that I like made me feel kind of stupid. Where uh, I was a little conflicted about it. I liked the idea of it a lot. I think it was a really Ref or kind of like a interesting creative way to um like treat that particular piece of subject matter so where they would like look around like because that's a thing i don't know maybe i should save that for the end of the stream i don't think i should start talking about auschwitz right now <laughs> but i do have a lot of opinions about it maybe zach saraceno first and then remind me and i'll tell you i'll give you my zone of interest uh thoughts just to warm them up. And then I know I watched it on the previous stream, but most people in here were not there for that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, we should review uh, Rick Ross's new song. Don't fuck with King. Yes, sir. Last time I watched this, I was uh said we should make a TikTok skater tier list. Zach Saraceno A tier. Alex Midler S tier. Bubba Jackson S tier. Who else do we have? Um, Louis Elliott C tier. <laughs> Someone wrote, he's white. So what? Are you saying you can't be a white king? Jabe style? Oh, yeah, Jabe's on there for sure. Zone of interest in. Interest is a letterboxed toupee movie or toupe? What does that mean? Don't let that bird shit. He got a weak stomach. Niggas know I'm sick. I don't spit. I vomit. Yeah. Got it. We should have ramp slow mode that shit, fam. Got a weak stomach. Niggas know I'm sick. I don't spit. I vomit. Yeah. Got it. One egg shot. Mr. Steez reporting for duty. Shoot a nigga in his thigh and leg and tell him catch up like mayonnaise. Um, I'm the sickest nigga doing it. Bet that baby. These are the niggas dope. I'm wet crack baby. Yes. Get back, get back, boy. Dang, that was a wet one. These are the Not niggas quite a Toby dope. Ryan wet level, but baby. Yes. pretty good. Get back, get back, boy. This is a step back. Clumsy ass nigga slip and fall into a debt trap. Them boys pussy. Born without a backbone. And if you strap, we can trade like the dollar. Dude, would you guys be pissed if you were Tyshawn's girlfriend? And he he blurred your face in Zach Saracino's edit. 
I might be a little pissed off if I were her. And if you're strapped, we can trade like the Dow Jones. When the mother, this guy thinks he's you to have a double back three. I aim at your moon and get my howl on. Some niggas clap. Like, you won't even hard post me, and then I'm in the background of a, you have your Nolly inward heel clip, and you blur my face? What the fuck? What if she asked? Yeah, no. She might have asked. I'm just fucking around, obviously. I wolf, I'm on that dry cush. And when it comes to that paper, I stack books. Thank you, Mary. Put you on your feet and put some money on your head. Life ain't cheap. You better off dead if you can't pay the fee. Shout out my nigga fee. See, every motherfucker at the door don't get a key. You're outside looking in. So tell me what you see. It's about money. It's bigger than me. I told my homies don't get a key. The Nikel drought is over. Yeah. Alright, chat. I see the hottest white boy out right now. Cannon. Switch varial? Words with the cannon. They could tell it to my mother for get cannon. Zach Saracino, there you have it. I actually think Toby Ryan's still the hottest white boy out right now. If Toby Ryan's even white, he might be like a Hawaiian or something. <clears throat> Switch Vero was sick, yeah. There's some good tricks in there. Wet, crispy, those are kind of opposite adjectives, but they mean the same thing. I think my window guy gave up. He put one he put one screen on and dipped. Oh, whoa. Trailer? I forgot weapons, Colin Provost rode for this brand. You must recognize. First, the attack warning. If an attack is expected, the sounds will sound a rising and falling note like this. fucking love creature yes the kids love every time i go to the skate park all i see is kids wearing creature <laughs> they're everywhere um i could see creature at, like actually being one of those uh companies that uh people start buying the sweater of and they don't know what it is day in the life of skater girl in mumbai All right, well, I think that's enough. <clears throat> Joe, please review Blondie. Mo oh, fuck. Hang on, let's play this really quick. Actually, this might get the VOD completely nuked. Fish tanks and marble floors living big. I'm gonna skate to this. My official jab. Crack my official jab. From my pen and pad. Ghost writers, they get the floss. What you could have had. Record label taking a loss. Are you in your bag? You a worker on the chart. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> get the mind tell by my watch. This a different time. Living fine. I'm getting high as your shit decline. Who believes? Damn, I'm getting high as your shit decline. That's badass. Rick Ross is my favorite rapper right now. In the in the rap beef, I'm team Ricky Ross. 
I watch this a different time. Living fine, I'm getting high as your shit decline. Who believes he moving keys in his Louis V's? Mm. Run up on you and snatch your chain. Watch you bitches bleed. Feel the pain or just describe where you... I gotta be honest, though. I don't think Rick Ross is snatching any chains. Definitely not Drake's. Really right. Either you niggas getting money or ready to die. B I G or give a fuck if you chi I leave. You got it and you keep it tough if you be by me. Mm. Do the job. Better known as the Charles Schwab. Double loss spread through the yard and I swear to God. Pop a perk for the field. Go and count me a meal. Kill you niggas for free. Do it all for the thrill. Ooh. She said he's gonna kill you guys for free. <laughs> Because he feels like it. Niggas leaking their records when we speaking directly. Dang. Called Drake out directly. He said he's leaking his record while they're speaking directly. Why did Drake leak his song? Why didn't he just put it out? What kind of bullshit was that? It's for free. Do it all for the thrill. Niggas leaking their records when we speaking directly. If we keeping the gangster, when you see me, you check me. Gotta leave a like on that. Uh, for the thrill. Play the Drake? I'll play it in a sec. We're not done with Ricky white, yet. Ooh, he called Drake white. White boy, I see you. Ooh. <laughs> he called Drake white. And then he made fun of him for getting a nose job. I see you. Yeah. Check. Getting bullied, don't walk up on me cause the clip is fully. Niggas pussy don't wanna push me. I'm like really Woody, like his moves, but he never had a fight in school. Always ran another nigga had to write your cruise. Ooh, he said that Drake didn't get into fights at school. <laughs> he said Drake didn't get into fights at school. Oh <laughs> rip Drizzy. Get fucked, idiot. Just copy and paste. Wheezy gave you the juice. Oh, and he called his flows copy and paste. Another nigga had to write your cruise. Flow was copying your pace. Wheezy gave you the juice. Another white boy at the park wanted to hang with the crew. Oh, he called him another white boy at the park who wanted to hang with the crew. Pace. Wheezy gave you the juice. Another white boy at the park wanted to hang with the crew. <laughs> Pull it surprise when they're switching up like dyed denim. Get incentives for all the killings while we ride rentals. Look me right in my face. He beginning to shake. Told you niggas stay scheming. I predicted my fate. Got more money than you. Fuck you want me to say. Does Rick Ross really have more money? Rick Ross net worth. Uh, 150 million? That does that is Drake has way more money than that. 250 million. Top 10 richest hip hop artists. Ooh, Diddy. Uh-oh. 160, 170, 250. Eminem. Let's go. The fucking Zack Saracino of the rap game. Shout out the White King. Number seven, Eminem. 250, Drake. Kanye, 400. God damn. Burner. Dre. Diddy. Oh, man. 2.5 billion? Holy shit, Jay-Z. <laughs> I knew he was rich. I didn't know he was that rich. What the fuck? Two and a half billion? <laughs> That's insane. Rick Ross didn't even make the list. Rick Ross might be the type of rich, though, where he's got it all under his mattress. Eminem, whack? Dude, fuck you. How could you say that about Eminem? I told this story before, but I'll tell it again. I... When I used to play soccer, when I was like I don't know, like ten or something, my team went zero and nine, and there were ten games in the se in the uh, in the season, and I listened to "Lose Yourself" like ten times before the last game because I'm like, we're not going to lose every game. I listened to it with my eyes closed, um, and we lost anyway. <sighs> Jay Z owns my apartment complex. That's pretty sick. Stay scheming, I predicted my fate. Got more money than you. Fuck you want me to say 50 mils for the crib. Where you want me to stay? I can shoot up the block. I got bitches to pay. Let you DM my old, but got bitches you can't. Let Ooh. you get on my songs. It was good for your face. Now bitch nigga is home and no room for debate. Pop a perk for the field. Go and count me a meal. Kill you niggas for free. Let's skip to the Do part where he talks. 
Made that music. You never wanna be a nigga anyway, nigga. That's why you had operation to make your nose smaller than your father knows, nigga. That's crazy. He said that <laughs> He said that Drake doesn't want to be black, so he got a nose job. I don't follow you, nigga, cause you said the motherfucking cease and desist the French Montana, nigga. You said the police, nigga, hating on my dog project. That wasn't the same white way that I seen, nigga, when we were making them early records, nigga. When you were happy to be around, nigga, seeing nigga so fucking stunning your life, nigga. Get Wheezy some more money, nigga. Get rap a lot some more money, nigga. White boy. And then he also said that Drake got a six pack implant. And then he doesn't show off his abs anymore because he had to get a surgery. And now he doesn't have that fake six pack anymore. No skaters can rock the hood, but they know real hip hop. What does that mean? Um, Joe, go view Drake's story. Oops, IG. Champagne Poppy. Let's see. True? Oh, no. Obs. Obs? Ooh. I would have censored that if I were you, Drake. The internet is saying you got a nose job? You look the same to me in the kitchen today. This is a real text he got from his mom, by the way. I can't believe you would get one without me. Dude, nobody's mom is using that emoji. Whose mom uses, like, the blushing tea emoji? That's bullshit. Because you know I always wanted one. Don't tell me that you got tattoos with ma without me and now this, too. The fuck? I would have got us a two-for-one deal if I went, ma. It's coming from Rick Ross, the guy I did songs with. He's gone loopy off the Munjaro. I don't know what that is. Probably some liquor. He hasn't eaten in days, and it's turned him angry and racist. He's performing at proms for money. It's bad. Don't worry. We'll handle it. Um, rich for everyone, nosy goof. This is pretty lame. Rick Ross's clap back to this was way sicker. It's scr fucking uh, posting screenshots of like fake texts messages with his mom. Let's see if it's on here. Maybe it's on Twitter. Uh, or on Instagram. This is pretty cool. Oh my god, he's posting like an old guy. Oh, what the fuck? Holy shit. What? So cool. <laughs> I've never seen a Drake. I've never seen a Drizzy Jet. Oh, here it is. Beautiful day. Oh, it's such a beautiful day. Me waking up from a nap, I just realized BBL Drizzy called his mommy on me. Huh? Uh, he shared their text messages between each other. Ah, uh, Cupcake Drake. Oh, cupcake Tell your mama Drake. you stayed out past your curfew, white boy. <laughs> you wanted to hang at the park with the niggas. Smoke weed with the niggas while we washed our old school Chevys. White boy, you got a Chevy, white boy? I doubt it. But anyway, big nose. Big nose. Boy, you had 25% body fat with a carved out six piece. Stop. We know what time it is. That shit costs 40 bands. Stop. <laughs> but tell your mama. Well, in Miami, we say old oh, girl. Tell your old girl she a beautiful lady. I told you that before and I meant that. But you. Whoa, Andy called his mom hot. Tell your mama, white boy, you stayed out at the park too late. And you can't call her when you get in this shit. This shit too deep to call your mama, white boy. BBL Drizzy, Cupcake Drake. I mean, how could you not be on Rick Ross's side? I always love a guy that can pull out his phone and, and film his swimming pool and just roast the fuck out of somebody. That was awesome. <laughs> Rick Ross is such a, a, a good voice to talk shit into.
Cupcake Drake. I'm Team Rick. Not 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 Glazer. Rick Ross has lost his mind. Yeah, right. Rick Rick fucking obliterated his his ass. You got a Chevy white boy? <laughs> oh man. Let me see. The fucking problem with this thing is there's two versions out, which is kind of like a huge L for Drake. Nobody number one fan Your first number one I had to put it in your hand You pussies can't get booked Outside America for now I'm out in Tokyo Because I'm big in Japan I'm the hit maker Y'all depend on Backstage in my city It was friend zone You won't never take No chain off of us How the fuck you be Stepping with a size Seven men zone Ooh. This the part Ooh. With the bite Got nigga him. What's up I know my picture hell? on the wall when y'all cook up. Extortion, baby, hope the bread you been shook up. Cause top told you drop and give me 50 likes of push ups. Hood, your last one brick. You really not on shit. They make excuses for you cause they hate to see me lit. Pull your contract cause we gotta see the split. The way you doing splits, bitch, your pants might rip. You mm. better do that motherfucking show inside the bitty. Maroon 5 need a verse, you better make it witty. Then we need oh, a yeah. verse for the Swifties. Top say drop, you better drop and give them 50. It's a perfect match. Down. You ain't in no big three. Scissor got you wiped down. Travis got you wiped down. Savage got you wiped down. Like your label, boy, you in a scope right now. And you gon' feel the aftermath of what I write down. I'm at the top of the mountain, so you tight now. Just to add this talk with your ass, I had to hike down. Big difference between Mike then and Mike now. What the fuck is this, a 20v1, nigga? What's a prince to a king? He a son, nigga. Ooh. Get more love in a city that you fun, nigga. Metro, shut your whole ass up and make some drums, nigga. Yeah, I'm the six guy, I'm the front runner. Y'all nigga manager was Chuz, little blunt runner. Clean a six and you boys ain't even come from it. And when you boys got rich, you had to run from it. Cash blowing, able bread out here tricking. Trickin'? Shit we do for bitches, he doing for niggas. Jets, whips, chains, wicked, wicked, wicked. Spinning like you trying to fuck, boy, you tripping, boy, you tripping. Drizzy tripping there, probably got your bitch in there. I just got them done, boy, don't make me at the chipping nail. Rolling loud stage, I would turn, that was slick as hell. Shit'll probably change if it be him, start to kiss and tell. Hugs and kisses, man, don't tell me about no switches. I'll be rocking every fucking chain. Well, I own that was pretty sick. Hey, I'll be with some bodyguard. Uh, does a diss track count if you admitted to Ghost Riders? Um... I don't know. You know, I'm not really a hip-hop expert. Let's be honest. Ross's music is pretty shit at this point. Yeah, that last diss track was dope, though. <clears throat> All right. Gosh, I hate Drake. It is crazy listening to Drake's voice and then listening to a different rap. You're like, God, how, how has Drake become so famous while having such a fucking obnoxious voice? Team Drizzy, though. Team OVO until I die. Uh, I need some Ghost Riders, man. What the fuck? Um, Cupcake Drake. That's definitely not AI. It's like Whitney, top say drop your little midget ass. Better fucking. Hey, better drop and give me 50. Dude, he called him a midget. Drop and give me 50. Drop and give me 50. Hey, niggas really. Called Kendrick Lamar a midget. You're not even allowed to use that word anymore. That's how serious this beef is getting. It's starting to violate PC principles. I talking like I'm 50. Niggas really got me out here rapping what I'm living. I might take your latest girl a cuffer like I'm Ricky. Can't believe he jumping in this nigga turning 50. Every song that made it on a chart he got from Jizzy. Spend that little check, you gotta stay up out my business. Nigga, shout out to the Hooper that be busting out the gritty. He said that, uh, he said Rick Ross is almost 50. And every hit he ever had was from Drizzy. <sighs> Is that a slur now? Yeah, you can't say midget. It's not allowed. <clears throat> Remember the AI Joe reacting to your own part? Let's not let's not revisit those waters. We know why you mad, nigga. I ain't even tripping. All that little heartbroken Twitter shit for bitches. This far the top dog dropping, give me fifty. Drop. Kendrick has an ass unreleased song called "Din the Club." Um, 
Was it a diss track? Anyway, I'm sure Kendrick Lamar will... Uh, uh, Everybody's saying that he has something that's like insane on Drake. Like he, they're they're saying he's at a diss track that he's been sitting on for four years. So, um, all right. Uh, no, I'm done, guys. It's been two hours. I, have a, I need to finish my laundry. I need to clean. It's Sunday, and then next week I'm going to have a fresh mind and produce some great skateboarding YouTube videos. Um, all right, guys. Oh, zone of interest? We'll save it for next stream. Unless, okay, zone of interest? Uh, fuck. I haven't had any read any reviews for it at all, but this was my take on it. thought it was a really novel approach to exploring the Holocaust, like putting it, it was a very, I mean, auditorily, you know, a uh, driven film. Like it was a lot, and I don't have a sound bar, so that probably didn't, you know, help me too much. But um, I like the concept where you hear everything that's going on and you never really like look at it. Um, something that really tripped me up though was the inclusion of like the infrared footage of like the. It was like a Jewish girl or a German girl who was putting out all those like apples for the for the workers. I was like, that's kind of a nice sentiment, but it doesn't really seem to tie into the main story here. Um, I thought they did a really good job of casting very ugly and grotesque looking German people. Um, like the the main dude just had like the ugliest body. <laughs> ever and his shirt was off like three times in the movie um and then what else um it was the main dude's daughter really was that was i missed that i i knew there was some stuff that i was not fucking uh that i was not understanding because i was tired as fuck when i watched it and i was like there's no way everybody's this stoked on this movie and i'm just missing like what the point of this is um, and then what else? Yeah, I thought it was a really cool concept. Um, but it was, a, it was weird to watch a movie where you don't care about the, the people in the movie at all. Like, I did not give a fuck in the slightest about the German family that I was watching. Like, I didn't, like, feel sorry or care about really anything that was happening. So I was kind of just, like, witnessing a movie while not being really that engaged in it. <clears throat> All right. That's where I have it right now. And uh, maybe I'll watch it again. Probably not. Uh, maybe I'll watch a YouTube.